Hi everyone, this is Kieran Nichols at iResponds. Um, it's just about time to start, so we'll wait just a couple more minutes uh, to let everybody join and um, sign in. So we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Hello again, it's Karen Nichols at iResponds. Uh, looks like we've got a good group signed in. There may still be people joining here in the next minute or so, but we wanna go ahead and start um, so that we can um, you know, be um, cognizant of your time and, and make sure we finish up in the allotted time. So we'll start by um, sharing the agenda. I do want to let you know we will be answering questions towards the end of our webinar. So on the right hand of your screen in the um, go to webinar control panel, you'll see a window where you can post your questions. So feel free to do that throughout the webinar and we will get to them at the end. So looking at the agenda here, um, we are going to start off with just a couple of, sli of slides talking about um, iResponse and how we fill a need in the hospitality industry for both hotels and restaurants. We've noticed we've got some uh, restaurants, um, restaurant attendees on th the um, webinar today, which is wonderful. Um, we will dig right into the content of what matters most on social um, to inspire loyalty and loyal guests, loyal patrons. We'll also highlight what matters most to, especially the 18 to 34-year-old U.S. travelers um, and earning, earning their um, future loyalty and how Facebook fits in that picture with that Facebook IQ research that we will be sharing. Um, we'll also share how brand loyalty programs are gaining, are, are um, faring in gaining or losing um, loyalty members in the last four years. Then we'll look at three studies, Facebook, one by Facebook, one by Google, one by TripAdvisor, and we'll talk about some commonalities and compare those re results. And then we'll end up looking at the ROI of social media and how it's affecting um, loyalty. So on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about our response, as I mentioned, a couple of, um, well, well, I will also introduce who's on the, on the uh, webinar today. Um, I, I'm Karen Nichols, as I've uh, mentioned, and um, I'm in charge of our sales and marketing efforts. Jolena McBride is joining me as well, and we'll be helping uh, present some of the slides. She is our social media manager at iResponse. And again, just to mention to anyone just logging on, if you have any questions, please put them on the right-hand side um, of the control panel, and we'll get to those at the end. All right, so now jumping into uh, who we are at iResponse. Um, we partner with hotels and restaurants um, to strengthen and expand their online presence. We were created by hotel industry leaders who are passionate about delivering an authentic and valuable service, both in the management of uh, guest reviews, guest satisfaction surveys, and also posting on social media accounts and channels. We are a service provider. We're not an IT company or an ad agency, or we have no software products to sell, but we um, are partner with hotels and restaurants um, to manage their reviews and social media. Our team of knowledgeable and experienced hospitality professionals has expertise in uh, all facets of, of the industry, hospitality operations, sales and marketing, brand management, 
revenue management and, and other areas of expertise, both at the hotel level and at the corporate level. So we understand your business and all of the demands on your time to take care of your guests. That's what's most important. And uh, as we mentioned, we, we began by um, responding to guest reviews on behalf of hotels and restaurants, and we have now expanded into social media management. And the next slide talks about um, some things that our current clients cite as the reasons why they love partnering with us, and we refer to that as the iResponse Advantage. Um, again, our hotel industry expertise, they know uh, that we know the language, we know the brand systems, um, we uh, take extra care in learning the intimate details of, of your property, and we build relationships with um, key team members so that we can be an effective partner. Um, we uh, are well acquainted with the brand systems, as I mentioned, and brand standards and guidelines, brand requirements of a certain amount of time to respond to reviews, and um, brand standards and voice, et cetera. Um, having those in mind when we are posting on social media as well. We do want to point out that we are vendor approved by Marriott uh, for responding to guest comments, um, including their restaurants. Um, and uh, we want to be considered an extension of your team. That, that's really what it boils down to, uh, partnering with you and um, helping you um, meet your goals at your hotel. So now we're going to jump into, well, I did, we'll mention, uh, we'll show our brand logos. Um, we span the hospitality spectrum um, from global and regional brands to boutique and lifestyle brands, as well as independent hotels and restaurants. Um, and then we will just put up here our two platforms that we uh, service, uh, responding to guest reviews um, and social media management. Um, so we, we engage with those social butterflies in the social and digital online arena, and you provide exceptional guest experiences at your hotels and restaurants. So now we'll dig into the meat of our webinar. I'm going to turn it over to Jelena, and she'll talk about um, what matters most to inspire loyalty. Yes. Um, good afternoon or morning to those not on the East Coast. Um, we're going to get started. So to help better understand today's travelers and how loyalty is gained in today's travel market, Facebook IQ actually commissioned Accenture to do a survey of 2,079 people in the U.S. ages 18 and over who have traveled domestically or abroad in the last year. Combining this data with insights from other sources, they uncovered some important trends impacting the hospitality industry today. So let's look at the key findings from this study first. Of the 2,079 participants surveyed, Facebook found that 87% participate in loyalty programs and 70% of them agree that being a part of a program makes them feel more loyal to a company. The top three reasons indicated by Facebook survey respondents for staying loyal to a hotel company were number one, quality of accommodation at 91%, number two, consistency of service at 87%, and number three, convenience of processes, so simple booking processes, at 85%. These answers significantly outranked quality of the rewards program, which was only chosen by 65% of those surveyed as a reason to stay loyal. And as far as the influence of price, only 48% of those surveyed said that they have changed travel brands in the last year because of price, which is very telling of how loyalty to hotels has changed things over the last 10 years. So what does this mean for hoteliers and restaurateurs? Number one, quality. Provide unforgettable quality to give travelers a reason to commit longer term. Loyalty rewards are still important for many consumers, but quality of service is travelers' top criteria for staying loyal to brands. Number two, consistency. Provide a consistent level of exceptional customer service experience across your offerings to draw travelers back. And number three, convenience. And as for convenience, we will dig deeper um, on the next slide. So the third highest reason for from the survey results to staying loyal to a brand is convenience. In today's tech-driven world, consumers stick with brands that offer convenient purchasing processes. Take a look at these statistics from the survey. 61% said they're more likely to stay loyal to a hotel that has an easy-to-use website or mobile app. 
52% said they ut utilize OTAs to book their hotel rooms due to convenience. It includes all brands and their availability, plus it has guest reviews and comments all in one place. And 47% said that they are looking for ease across sites and apps when they are doing their travel planning. So to win loyalty, provide a simple booking experience and make all steps of the travel journey friction free. Travel consumers said they're more likely to return to brands with a click and cl quick and clear booking experience with 41% of 18 to 34 year olds saying they stopped a booking process because the website or app was too slow or too confusing. So what does the future look like when it comes to loyalty? In analyzing data from the survey, we believe that social media will play an even bigger role in keeping someone loyal to a travel brand. What steps should hotels take into consideration when managing their social channels? Here are some data points from the survey to keep in mind. 86% stated that they would find it acceptable for a travel brand to post in an online group that it was started by someone they considered a peer, a traveler that's just like them. 48% of those surveyed agreed that it would still, they would still value a recommendation from family and or friend when choosing a destination. 42% welcomed a tailored product recommendation based on their past purchases, likes, and interests it finds, and finds it would be valuable to them. And interestingly, 79% of those surveyed stated that they use at least one of the Facebook family of apps on a regular basis. And in addition, 76% of them do use Facebook for their travel related activities. Become a go-to brand by having consistent presence on consumer social networks. They're more likely to book with a brand that is already on their radar. Connect with travelers on social channels and provide personalized recommendations of things to do at or around your hotel. An example would be to post about a museum near a hotel that resonates with museum lovers or post about a great act outdoor activity for nature lovers. And dig digging deeper into how social channels and other sites impact travel planning, those surveyed said that 36% use Facebook family of apps, which includes, if you're not familiar, you have Facebook, um, Facebook owns Instagram, and Facebook owns um, Facebook Messenger, obviously, and then also WhatsApp. 30% use travel review sites like TripAdvisor when searching for a destination in hotels, and surprisingly, only 26% use search engines when searching for a destination. Drilling down further, of which family, Facebook family of apps is used most often, we find that 76% uses Facebook Weekly, 65% uses Facebook Messenger Weekly, and an important note here is that Facebook Messenger is taking over in our industry. It's becoming an app of choice when communicating with hotels. We can no longer ignore this app by not responding to these conversations properly and quickly. And then 76% state that they also use Instagram weekly and 64% use WhatsApp weekly. Now we're going to switch gears slightly and take a look at how brand loyalty programs are doing. According to the latest Calibri Labs research looking at a 12 month period ending in September 2018, it indicates that there has been a steady growth for direct bookings from loyal customers versus third party or OTA reservation bookings. Looking at the hotel's on site bookings, the past year over year growth of brand.com bookings of loyalty members has consistently increased across all US hotel, hotel tiers, showing a 6.6 to 18.2% growth in the past four years. It's clear that brands are effectively slowing down the shift in OTA and third-party searches and bookings. Economy, mid-scale, and upper mid-scale hotels all enjoy double-digit growth in loyalty contribution with steady gains since the launch of book direct campaigns by hotel brands. And upper, upper upscale and luxury branded hotels came in just under 10% growth, and although the rate of growth for upscale hotels is slower at 7%, they have the largest base of loyalty bookings with over 61% of the total base of these hotel room nights. Loyalty member campaigns have helped increase the rate of direct bookings, while OTA channels has either held steady or somewhat declined. Earlier this year, Hilton CEO Chris Nassetta confirmed that their web direct booking channels are growing at a much faster rate compared to OTA channels. This is great news for the industry. 
Gaining more direct customers through the use of strong loyalty programs allows hotels to build invaluable relationships directly with their guests. When brands use this data to provide guests with exceptional personalized experience, this will entice them to come back again and again. And so this segues into how social conversations can help you build invaluable relationships directly with your guests. For many people, social media is at the heart of the consumer brand relationship, which can be applied to the guest hotel relationship. The Edelman Trust Barometer study found that close to 40% of individuals said that they are unlikely to become emotionally attached to a brand unless the brand is interacting one-on-one -on -one with them via their social channels. When asked the question, which do you believe is giving you the truth, information in advertising, marketing materials, or what a brand says in direct communication with you, 59% of survey respondents said they trusted direct communication with brands via emails, messaging, or responding to a comment posted on social media. So looking ahead, social conversations continue to be an important avenue of getting the word out about your hotel and its amenities to gain more bookings and turn your guests into loyal customers and advocates for your property. It's smart for hotels to invest in social media marketing to have a consistent social presence that so showcases what a guest experience is at your hotel is like. All right, and here I'm actually going to turn it back over to Karen. We want to take a quick poll to get everyone involved and see where everyone is at, and she will take it from there. Thanks, Jelena. Um, that was some great information from that uh, Facebook IQ um, survey from just a couple months ago. I'm going to launch the, the um, poll. We want to take some time to um, give you a chance to um, talk back to us and let us know which social networking your property participates in. So you should all be seeing the survey right now. You can answer um, for as many social work networking sites that your prop property is participating in. So um, we'll give you just a few seconds here to um, to choose um, the choices and then we'll um, show the results here before we finish up these last few slides of the webinar. Okay, I'll give just a little bit more time here for people to choose. All right, I think. I say no. Nope, I still have a few more percentages <laughs> joining. Looking at the uh, looking at the results. All right. I think I will close it up right now. So I think a good bit of you have voted, so that I can show the results here. Okay. So let's see what the results look like. Okay. Pretty common that Facebook is being utilized by the majority of hotels and restaurants. In fact, a lot of restaurants, I know you guys have seen, uh, sort of use it as their, their main um, website. They know people are in um, Facebook uh, looking at places to eat when they're out and about. Um, and so that's not surprising. Instagram, that, that's good. Uh, usually that is the second choice. Uh, that most hotels and restaurants will utilize as well because of that visual aspect of sharing Twitter and then LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn is probably used for maybe some hiring or some um, uh, higher brand um, recognition. So, okay. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next few slides in our presentation. Um, as I mentioned, um, we, we dug into some studies by Facebook, Google, and TripAdvisor. We're, we're data geeks here at iResponse. Uh, I know I noticed from several of the people who signed on that um, uh, you've attended other webinars that we've had in the past, so we're glad that you joined us for these. Um, but we're constantly gobbling up the latest research, and so uh, with so many studies in the marketplace, and of course each of them has their own viewpoint, um, so we decided to do a compa comparison of those studies from Facebook, Google, and TripAdvisor, looking for areas where the results were similar or, you know, definitely top key areas or topics where they, they agree upon those. So, you know, that, that sort of gives more credence to it when we see, okay, these three people are, try are finding the same, um, same 
uh, answer or reaction from their from their survey respondents, um, then that means that it's probably pretty pretty accurate across the board. And then there may be a few places where they have differences of opinion. So we'll dig into this Facebook study first. Um, again, that's a lot of the research that Jelena just shared in those earlier sl slides. So we'll just highlight those top findings um, just so that we can compare to the, the next two that we'll be discussing. So the top finding, um, individuals are looking for convenience. We heard that uh, when, when Jelena mentioned that, when they're planning and booking their travel needs, they want it to be friction free. Um, in order to win loyalty, um, just like I said, that simple booking process um, and the travel journey uh, needs to be very easy for them to, to um, take their steps through. Um, young travelers rely on peer-to-peer -peer or alike travelers recommendations and especially like to see others experiencing uh, other experiences at hotels or restaurants whenever they're making their decisions. Long-term loyalty is still built on the fundamental appeal of quality and consistency. I think we would all agree that that is key. And that future loyalty is formed by being part of a consumer's extended social network. We're seeing that more and more as people are um, interacting and uh, searching in Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. So on the next slide, we'll get into the uh, Google study, what they found in recent research, um, that reviews are some of the most valuable information sources for travelers when searching for hotels. Ratings are important, but many want to see ratings from their peers, especially a traveler they, they consider to be like them. Um, they want to see the most recent reviews, and they place a heavier weight on those, um, you know, within a, the time frame that they're looking at it. And they're looking for ease in that booking experience, similar to what we just saw a minute ago with Facebook. And they gravitate to, gravitate to booking sites that provide a one-stop shop. They can find all the information that they're looking for about their destination. They'll look at reviews. Um, they want to be able to book their arrangements in the same place and then share their, their experience with, um, with their friends and family. And then the TripAdvisor study was the last one that we're looking at for comparison. Um, TripAdvisor found that individuals expect far more value back from the effort that they're willing to put into when they're doing their research, uh, especially in, on a site like TripAdvisor. They want to be able to review other, other stay experience comments. However, they do still turn to friends and family for trusted information. They do want real time or the most recently posted information. They want to see that because they feel like that's obviously more relevant. And they like to see map functions of what to do near those destinations where they'll be traveling. So what are the common threads? We'll look at those on this next slide. Um, reviews are still the most important factor when consumers are making travel decisions, but we've seen that shift toward making sure they're, they're sorting them by most recent reviews and reading those uh, within the time frame they're, they're traveling. Um, Peer-to-peer -peer recommendations uh, really resonate with um, 18 to 34 year olds. Um, so TripAdvisor has added the social feature um, that they call Travel Hub. Um, in addition to just being a review site or even the booking engine, um, Google provides recommendations from a traveler like, like um, the person who's searching. And then Facebook offers travel related advertisements and through tailored communications because they know everything about you and your profile, so they're able to personalize that. Again, individuals are looking for that ease of booking, one-stop shop, app choices for easy access, you know, recommendations, anything individualized or personalized to them. And then the last point, which we really have seen come through, is the importance of being part of a social, of, of a person or consumer travelers social network. So all three channels have made and will continue to evolve their channels to be a one-stop shop, one -stop shop, that's easier said than, <laughs> easier read than said maybe, um, in 2020 for travel. And so we can't ignore part of, of being in those social networks as those studies pointed out. This uh, sort of the last section that we'll be talking about are the benefits of social media marketing. Um, we've always um, talked about having an ROI proof that the money spent on social channels, in fact, can turn 
or influence lookers into bookers for hotels or um, patrons at restaurants. And so each year, Social Media Examiner surveys marketers with the goal of understanding how they're using, using social media to grow and promote their businesses. And so this past year, they compiled information from more than 50, excuse me, 5,700 marketers to provide some good data that reveals an ROI of social marketing efforts over time. And so this chart, chart shows of those who have been using social media marketing at least two years, they found it useful for building a loyalty fan. A large percentage saw better sales results, results with the more years they were um, doing social media marketing. So staying with social media efforts um, results in increased exposure year over year consistently. Um, with at least two years of social media marketing efforts um, that it generated leads for them. They also reported substantially better results in driving online traffic to their websites, the more that they were on social media. And as a bonus, it provided them with marketplace insight because they were able to see, as I mentioned, a person's profile. You have an idea from your Facebook pages or sort of the demographics of the people uh, interacting with it. So you know, uh, you get a little bit idea of uh, who's taking a look at your, um, your information that you're sharing on your Facebook um, networks. So we'll end with our key takeaways from the webinar. Um, uh, everyone is competing for guest loyalty, the social channels, the brands, review sites, um, and we can't ignore those basics of quality, consistency of service, and the convenience of booking. Um, social media will play an even bigger role in keeping someone loyal to a travel brand, um, not only just you know, being a member in a rewards program, um, peer to peer influence is becoming even more important than trusting what a brand says to be true. We saw that. Um, guests still consult reviews and decision making and they um, want to see those most recent reviews. We've talked several times about convenience in, in several different ways in these studies and definitely a hassle free purchase journey is very key, uh, especially in today's world with um, all of our devices and and ways that we can search for information or book information. Um, and so travelers tend to stick with brands that, that offer that convenience, make it really easy for them. And then keep in mind that um, seeing an ROI in social media takes time um, from the results we just saw in um, that social media examiner study, um, a minimum of two years. Um, and it's actually sort of consistent, having consistent presence uh, consistent posting, um, giving um, the uh, a person on social media uh, a feel for the experience that they will have at your hotel, uh, the experience or the atmosphere they might have in your restaurant, those types of things. Uh, and then over time, you'll see um, the results of growth in your network and also in, in your business. So I'm looking to see if we have any questions. We're at the end now, so we certainly appreciate you joining us for the webinar. We do have our information here. Um, if you want to reach out to us, um, our, we are doing this very same webinar uh, next week on a Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you uh, want to um, share this uh, uh, webinar with um, your colleagues. Um, so we'll be, we'll be here again sharing this information. Um, I don't see any questions at this point. Um, also check back each month. Like I said, we do uh, webinars on different topics, different research that we are um, digging into, and uh, we love sharing this with, with you all. So with no questions, um, we're ending right here on time, close to 2.30. Uh, so I hope you all have a great rest of your day and um, appreciate you joining us. Thanks.